Of course, it's very easy to look over the what caused the failure after the event and put your hand on it, but in the, in the middle of the event itself, it's quite different. Everyone felt that the lack of aggression of 30 Corps to achieve its objectives, even within some reasonable time of what was thought to be possible, had a great deal to do with the, with the failure. The airdrop uh, was not sufficient, of course, to carry out a plan like this the way we would have liked. You always want more than you can get. In theory, of course, and I think this would be a principle in any airborne operations from now on, you must drop all your combat troops at one time. And you must drop them near the objective and not six or eight miles away, as Urquhart did uh, in the drops at, at Arnhem. His, uh, his main landing areas were, I think, six miles to the west. And it just doesn't work. You've got to take your losses and drop it on the target. Well, my task was to take the three bridges uh, leading into across the Rhine at Arnhem uh, on that first afternoon. And we got, uh, after a certain amount of skirmishing and uh, meeting a few Germans on the way from the dropping zone uh, to the bridges, we actually got onto the railway bridge when it was blown uh, by the enemy uh, in our faces. We knew at that time the opposition was not going to be very great, and we thought we really shouldn't have much difficulty. Our difficulty possibly would be to get there at all in face of the enemy uh, of air opposition. We never recovered from the fact that we had to land some seven or eight miles away from our objective. Now, that was a, a, a major factor in really determining the, the fate of that particular operation. It was far too far. The second was that the lifts did not come in, as we hoped, on time because of weather and for other reasons. The third one was, I think another major one, was that the... The Second Army didn't manage to get up to us uh, in the time which was originally hoped for. We thought we would be joined within two days or three days at the very most. But in fact, as uh, things turned out, we eventually stayed ourselves north of the river for some nine days. The greatest failure... The greatest mistake was that they jumped too far away. I call it hedging along the horizon. That's what I said to my own parachutists. Just as General Gavin said, as he wrote in his book, I told them you must, under no circumstances, hedge along the horizon. You must, under all circumstances, you must get hold of the target in a hand-to-hand -hand battle, even if that involves losses. These losses pay back handsomely later on. Arnhem was the proof. As a matter of fact, Mr. Montgomery did not ask our advice. But the British were informed and they got the information by our radio because some days after the landing, uh, one of the British officers told me that they got the information of the Panzerdivision Hohenstaufen, but he didn't believe it. He said, we heard so many fairy tales of patriotic informers, and uh, we thought it will not be true.